right? So we were absolutely not permitted to have a regional grouping uh, in which the US wasn't a key, the, the, the leading member. But that's going to come back, you know? So Japan has a, you know, post that, the, the vision of an East Asian community, uh, the revival of that, if you want to talk about East Asian uh, of a multipolar world, that's going to return because there is a cultural and even a deep political, historical integrity to the, uh, the historical continuity to the idea of, of, of an East Asia, of there are separate Asian regionalisms that can, that can return. And Japan is a part of that. And what, what do you think about Japan, like Japan's role in interacting with the ASEAN countries? And we've talked about this a little bit before, how, okay, on the one hand, Japan really looks like a Germany of the East of East Asia being a vassal or like a direct appendix to the United States. But it hasn't behaved like that for the longest time. And actually, I think a lot of ASEAN countries, uh, including, uh, you know, not including, plus, um, a lot of people in, in, in China too, they still look at, at Japan even favorably, like especially in tour, tourist terms, right? They, and they believe in being able to connect with Japan in order to uh, further regional relations. What do you think is the ASEAN approach there? Maybe John. ASEAN's approach or, to or Japan no. or Japan's approach to the interactions with Japan, like what role will oh, Japan play in the in development of the region? Mm. Japan has been, um, if I may, uh, no, the um, has been a big and important supporter of ASEAN. Uh, don't forget, I mean, you know, the, the ASEAN, ASEAN has this system of uh, having, as you said, this concentric rings and it has dialogue partners. Uh, among which you have this ring, you know, China, Japan, South Korea, etc., Australia, the U.S., India, United States, and Russia. So every year it gathers these people. It, it gathers these groups in concentric rings, uh, you know, at least once a year around um, the East Asia Summit, for example. So Japan has, has been very supportive of this structure for East Asian regional architecture. Uh, supportive of of, of ASEAN, uh, supportive in in investments, but at the same time, over the last few years, uh, very recently, of course, with this kind of mobilization, since this sort of U.S. pivot to Asia, and the beginning of a raw containment policy, you have uh, efforts such as the Trans-Pacific Partnership. You have the Quad. In which Japan, each of these, in, in each of which Japan has actually played a key, uh, plays a key role. It's you know you often think it's not just Japan joining along. I think they played a key role in 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 conceptualizing uh, and in pushing for 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 these uh, structures. These structures do not they they run right across uh, the the regional architecture. They just bulldoze over the, uh, this. All of a sudden, you have an AUKUS, for example. What on earth has it got to do with uh, you know the way people in the region uh, organize themselves, right? You're going to have uh, these nuclear submarines running, literally running across uh, you know our, our, our waters, and uh, so so there's the return of these types of um, imperialist forms of regional organization. You you got to remember right now as as you know NATO is about to. Uh, proposes to come east again to set up shop in Asia Pacific. They did. We did have a proposal for a Southeast Asian Treaty Organization. It's yeah. not the first time. This was against the Vietnamese. This this is during the Vietnam War. So the the proposal for this type of alliance form runs absolutely counter to the logic of Southeast Asian and regional uh, uh, relations. Right. These are exclusive. Yeah military alliances the type of which you know and and, and you pascal uh, you, you're you're the scholar on this this is how you trigger a wider war this type okay. of structure the asean one does not it eschews it positively eschews military alliances so so that you know th those are some of the things at stake right now 
So Japan plays this 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 strange role. It has this, but it's also pushing you know direct really military relations with with uh, the Philippines right now. So th those things are not are not helpful uh, at all. How how do you view it now, Kosan? Um, the yeah. So Japan played um, an, an interesting role in um, Southeast Asia for um, many decades. Um, I don't know how far I should go back, but uh, let's say after the war, um, uh, in, in Japan lost the war. And then as sort of a, a reparation, Japan um, kind of tried to help Southeast Asian, help the Southeast Asian countries through ODA, et cetera, um, using JICA and uh, institutions. And so was the, there was that period when Japan was um, like the leader in Southeast Asia econom economically. Um, Japanese often like to talk about this, um, was it the uh, flying, flying geese theory where Japan was the leader and then there were other countries, other birds, geese uh, following Japan. Um, then, and then they all, all had this, um, role to play in, in this um, supply chain, manufacturing yeah. chain, et cetera. Um, so that was, uh, that, that kind of describes how Japan imagined itself, but also um, it kind of, I think, uh, did to a certain ex extent uh, reflect the role Japan was playing in the region. Um, so, but then I think uh, that changed after a while. I think um, after the first of the economic bubble in Japan and then the stagnation in Japanese economy, um, et cetera. And fast forward now, I'm, I'm not sure whether Japan has its own message to Southeast Asia today. It looks like yeah. Japan, at least from my perspective, but I, I think many people in Southeast Asia are actually saying this to, to me, to us, um, uh, they are not looking to Japan as a strong leader anymore. They don't have that kind of leadership. It, it looks like Japan is just following the U.S. Like it's yeah, a yeah. state of It's a very poor US message. And, yeah. 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 And doing what- It's a key point. There's an absolutely key point. Now yeah. Asia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you you don't look good in the region, right? Of of fiercely independent countries going around the region saying, you know, what you need is to cleave, you know, closer to the U.S. Actually, you know, to support unipolar order. There is still a sense of Asian, Southeast Asian, and Asian agency. You know, uh, that Japan has a, a traditionally a, a part of. We talked about this this earlier, going back all the way uh, to. Let's say, for example, uh, you know the Japanese victory over oh, in, in the Russo-Japanese War and its inspiration to the global South and to Asians, right? Uh, for in, uh, as an example of of anti-imperialist, uh, anti-colonial uh, kind of success, and uh, and then the Pan-Asian, uh, the Pan-Asianism, something I'm very interested in, which uh, both Pan-Asianism of the right and of the left that Japan had a key role in. Right, Chinese intellectuals. I mean, people like Sun Yat-sen um, uh, promoted this. Um, uh, South Asian or Indian intellectuals, but also Japanese. This later became. I mean, this 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 later comes about in a sort of very right-wing fascist way under the Greater East Asian Co-Prosperity Sphere. But the idea behind it is not going to go away. The idea of East Asia. So it's not just Southeast Asia now, but East Asia as a, or Asia, and East Asia as a certain region. So around the, in the 90s, when Japan was confident of itself, it was willing to back some of this. Mahathir had the leading vanguard role, pushing for an East Asian community. And Japan, he, was, he had Japanese support, right? Yeah. It's fine. When Japanese were on the top of the ladder, they were the top dog. They were willing to support this, with Japan having the kind of leading role in East Asia. Of course, the US put a spike in that, and we had to make do with APEC, right? So we were absolutely not permitted to have a regional grouping. Uh, in which the U.S. wasn't a key, the, the the leading member, but that's going to come back, you know. So Japan has a, you know, post that the the vision of an East Asian community, uh, the revival of that. If you want to talk about an East Asian uh, of a multipolar world, that's going to return because there is a cultural and even a deep political 
historical integrity to the, uh, the historical continuity to the idea of, of an East Asia, of there are separate Asian regionalisms that can, that can return. And Japan is a part of that. Yeah, it's just that right after, I think I traced the loss of confidence or Japan from, from trying to have a vision, as Naoko-san put it, of you know, an East Asia, to turn around to being the saboteur for, for an East Asia, right? It's as if they want us to be under NATO now. The turnaround point was around 2010, when I think psychologically it was really important. The economy was overtaken by China. <laughs> yeah, they, they became no longer the larger uh, player, and, and Japan no longer understands or sees a role for, for itself, uh, you know, a constructive role, at least in public, uh, in an East Asian order in which China is the largest player. Yeah, so I think in general, Southeast Asian countries don't want to be divided or to take sides, you know, you yeah. are either with us or against us kind of thing. Um, they want to be united um, and, and kind of left alone in, in some ways, especially uh, in terms of sovereignty and, and all that. They just want to be independent um, and happily trade with each other. Um, but Japan comes to Southeast Asia today and makes them choose. And I don't think that's very welcome. Uh, or some countries do pretend to go along with it. But um, when Japan, you know, when the, the Japanese people are gone, they are thinking, wait, wait a minute, should we, you know, we shouldn't do, we should, we should try to just, you know, quietly just ignore this um, and, kind of attitude. Yeah, like just, just now, Japan is bringing South Korea and the Philippines along with, with it, and then trying to, you know, sort of divide Southeast Asia. And I don't know, I don't think that, that I don't think yeah, that's welcome. Yeah. You're not going to yeah. get Southeast ASEAN, you're not going to get Southeast contemporary Southeast Asia if you don't understand that forcing us to choose is uh, not going to work. It's a bottom line issue. Even it's very US aligned. Divide and rule. Yeah, yeah. Even the most sort of, you know, in many, many people think of Singapore as one of the more US aligned ones. No, bottom line, zero. We're not going to choose because yeah, they understand say sovereignty. They yeah, say they understand their sovereignty. That, that's right. Because yeah, choosing has to do with being subjugated. So, but the, the 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 contradicting part here is that, of course, like there are U.S. bases. There there are base agreements with mm -hmm. Singapore. There are base agreements with Thailand. And so, on a map, if you if you just look at the bases, it almost looks as if the Southeast Asia or a good part of it has chosen exactly. sides. And now, and and Vietnam is going with the Russians because the president, the Russian president, was there just a, just a while ago. But yeah, yeah, yeah. that is. That is a lot of makeup on on something that underlying you're saying is not true. Could you explain that more? Yeah, those those are just grist for stupid articles, right? The day after, oh, you know, it's gone. Southeast Asia, this country, Vietnam has chosen to go with the US. Remember all these articles? Whenever it's one of these, oh, they've gone with China. No, they have not gone with China or with, and they won't, or, or with the US, and uh, and they won't. Because Southeast they, Asian countries, they, right? They play with everybody. Yeah. A bit. That's about the point, right? I mean, they Thailand, play, they want to relate. Bases, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Some of it you can see in classic European realist terms as balancing. Mm -hmm. But I think that's that's still fairly uh, superficial. Okay, I mean, we, we talked earlier about the framework uh, of, of European international relations. I mean, our, our notion, our, our theories, in fact, our preconceptions about how international relations work come from European experience. And you just impose that on a region that has actually had a very, very diff different experience, a very different culture. Uh, it's not going to work, actually. So we come to the end of the universalizability of, 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 that, of that framework. So if, you, if one insists, one can see it as balancing behavior, but I think there's more behind it. One thing behind it, for example, is that the nation state, as it is, is not just some absolute. There are a lot of other relationships, the people to people part, the sub-region to sub-region, city to city uh, relationships. Those are all there. It's a much richer framework, tapestry of, of relationships than contemporary European international relations gives credit for. Yeah, this is this is where I would find it so interesting if you could like drag Japan back into that boat, because, you know, there was this moment in 1955 in Bandung, Japan was there. 
Japan was there, and there was this moment in the in believe it or not, up until sixties, <laughs> where Japan was also like, shall we go neutral or not? And believe it or not, MacArthur was one of the guys who said you should be neutral. You know, the militarists at the time they actually the the way they thought the Japanese should be neutral because they would uh, would be a natural buffer. And they can, you can expand the buffer to Southeast Asia. And that's actually not a dumb idea. And I wonder if there, will, there might be a way for Southeast Asia to you know, kind of woo Japan back into, into its boat, you know, uh, because it would make so much more sense. Yeah, so I think that's where um, institutions like ASEAN or ASEAN mm -hmm. Plus 3 will be important. Another um, important thing would be RCEP. Um, regional um, comprehensive, comprehensive. E econo economic partnership, uh, Japan is included, and uh, so is Southeast Asian countries and China. Um, so and Australia. I think those would mm -hmm. Australia, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there, there are forces that want to create a cooperative, collaborative uh, international framework. Unfortunately, there are also forces mm -hmm. who want to see everything in black and white and whatever is good for China is bad for the United States and it's bad for everybody else. Therefore, we have to make the life for the Chinese as horrible as possible. And if yeah. you're not with us, you're against us. I wonder how we, because ASEAN to me seems like this, this archetype of non-conformist in that sense. So, and something that could like, that will naturally kind of work against that, that black and white mentality of the neocons. Uh, ab absolutely. Yeah. So I'm yeah. I'm observing where Japan is going in this, and um, and I was wondering if you know Japan is all the way to the end with the United States, but then financially, if we look at it, Japan um, is sort of trying to de-dollarize a, a bit or to um, uh, dump its U.S. treasure bonds a little bit, um, like what China is doing. Um, so it seems like Japan is um, trying to kind of uh, find its way as much as possible so that economically and and otherwise it won't um, go down so much um, with the West. Or yeah, when, when, the, when, when Naoko-san yeah. and I, when, when, you, when you and I discuss this, we often put it in the framework of, uh, in, the, in this very simple uh, challenge, right? So the founder of your university uh, uh, it came up with Keio this. University. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 He, because our Yukichi's famous formula, exit Asia, enter exit Asia. Europe. That's a, that yeah. was well, an actual said, program, a, right? Yeah. He said that's a, not, not he exactly said Asia, not the exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so Japan's challenge now is, you know, to undo the Fukuzawa. other way. Yeah. Yeah. And to reverse I, it, and yeah. I think it, it needs to exit Europe, enter. Asia. I think he did what was right in that time because yeah. that was when the West was rising, mm -hmm. when the West was powerful and China was weak, um, and, and Japan was practically frightened by that the fact that China lost in the um, Opium War, and, and that let Japan to look made Japan to look at the West, turn to the West. But now it's different. It's it's when the U.S and the West is relatively declining and Asia is rising. So, and Japan is, I believe it's still part of Asia. And so why cannot Japan re-enter Asia? You and know, you know, it, at, the, at the end, the, the interesting thing is it might have to, there might not be another chance. Yesterday, I had a discussion with a very close friend of mine working for one of the big uh, investment banks. And she said, uh, look, we have a problem with China, which is the US market is open. We can, we can trade everything. The Chinese market, we can't. The Chinese market is closed. We have Hong Kong as, a, 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 as an entry, but the rest is relatively close. So even if we wanted to in banks in Japan, we couldn't because of regulations. The Chinese market works differently. Um, the, Russia is open again, interestingly enough. If, if they wanted, if it was politically possible, they could. But she said, today, Japan's finance is dependent upon the US and in a lesser degree, the Europe, not to do the same thing as China. If one of them ever has the idea of like closing their financial markets to others, well, then China, Japan would have a real huge, huge problem. And then under such circumstances, so more protectionism 
which might come if a second Trump comes in, right? We might see yes. more regulations. Yes. In, in yes. that circumstance, Japan might have, you know, you might run out of options and might, you know, have to work with others. And that will be part of this multipolarity. If it others happens. meaning, work with others meaning with who, with the West? Or try to the, try to more closely co cooperate with uh, Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia. Asia. Indonesia yeah. is a huge Asia. market. Um, oh, mm -hmm. uh, Malaysia is a oh, huge okay. market, but financially, I think they are not as integrated as through the big trading uh, trading places like New York and so on. But that's the, what we are seeing, like new infrastructure probably needs to be built. And I wonder if Japan yes. will yes. work on that. Yes. Yeah, so I, we're observing what, what Japan uh, is doing and might do. And and, and um, to add to what you were saying, Pascal, is the, is the rise of BRICS. And then the BRICS is um, creating a different financial um Scheme, should I say, or they're de-dollarizing um, and they're trying to use their their own currencies um, for trading with each other. Um, and so how is that going to play into all of this and what choices is Japan, uh, are Japan uh, going to make? So uh, those are questions I, I have in mind. Yeah, I mean, I Japan could do a little bit more balancing. For example, we observed mm -hmm. these, the decision over whether or not to join the uh, Asian Infrastructure and Investment Bank, the AIB, when it mm -hmm. came up. It mm -hmm. was ludicrous to see Japan left on the other shore when even the UK and, and Germany and yeah. others sort of piled on and, and joined this 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 uh, infrastructure bank. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and only, Jap only the, the US, of course, clearly wouldn't, the Obama administration, right? They, they wouldn't have any part of it. And Japan followed much against their yeah, own interests. And... That was actually a closer yeah. decision than people realized. There were there were quite a few people yes. in Japan yeah. Uh, you know, the... yeah, who wanted the... this. Japan was very much worried mm -hmm. about the ADBI at, the, at that moment in which it has uh, an important yeah. stake and uh, the mm -hmm. Asia Development Bank Institute, you know, in, uh, mm -hmm. so they, they saw themselves as a leader in that one and then said, we have to torpedo the counter project, a torpedo, we are not going to participate. But it is, mm -hmm. yeah, it's kind of a petty way of thinking about, because why not yeah. do both? <laughs> Just yeah. do both. Yeah, I think they, they were offered the vice chairmanship of, of this, you know, the Chinese offered them the vice chairmanship. They could have done both. So they need a little bit of that kind of uh, Southeast Asian type of flexibility uh, mm -hmm. or balancing, if you will, towards uh, actually integrating themselves uh, more politically uh, in, 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 uh, into the region and playing a constructive uh, role. Because right now, yeah, as, then... as, as Naoko says, you know, they have no vision to offer. It, it's, it, it's pretty sad. If all you're doing is going around trying to scare the others and saying, look, uh, you know, big bad bully is going to attack you and come with us. It's just uh, it's not going to wash. Yeah. Just to add, add one episode um, regarding AIB is that so we were in Singapore around that, that time and then um, um, watching the Japanese come uh, and they would ask us, so what do you think about AIB? But then the answer they want from me is, um, or John or other Southeast Asians is that, oh no, it's so bad. But then then they were shocked to hear Southeast Asians say, well, we think it's good for Southeast Asia. You know, why can't we have both? Why can't we yeah. have AI? More development funding AI? is better. Yeah, yeah. More, more options is better. <laughs> so why can't Japan think like that? You know, why isn't more better? Yeah, it's, yeah, Japan is not a black and white country, but they are influenced from in, in from that kind from that type of thinking. But it's um yes, they they are they are they are they are different peoples. And 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 the interesting thing about Japan is that things are usually not centrally controlled, but they are done by by large groups of meetings and so on. So it's very difficult to look inside yes. the black box. Um, yes, consensus based on consensus. Yeah, yeah, not top down, but yes. I wouldn't give up on it because in that in that black box, uh, organizations like the Kedan Ren, for example, right, the, the Chamber of Commerce, mm -hmm. with huge interest in 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 China, and in, in Chinese business. Yeah, uh, I think China remains has China has for most of Japanese history, and Japanese history goes back a long way. Um, been Japan's largest trading partner. Those relationships, very interestingly, have often included Southeast Asia. 
well, at least if you include the Ryuk Ryukyu yeah, or Okinawa today in that. So the old trade circuits, uh, even under under, under uh, you know post European the entry of of the Europeans into the into the regional trade networks, uh, involved Japan. So centers for this were like were not just say, Ryukyu, but you know Nagasaki, Macau, right, and the China, uh, east coast of China. So you have this entire trade order and China as an important market, uh, indispensable market, and even more so in in the coming years as you have this rapprochement between China, Russia, and North Korea, you, we, we see the prospect of the opening up of Siberia, enormously rich in the natural resources that Japan requires, Japan craves and uh, needs. So are you going to be frozen out of this? Do you want to be part of this or not? So so it's it's really a kind of an issue for, for, for Japan's uh, uh, prosperity. I'm not sure how long, how much longer they can hold out against actual economic interest and integration into the region on other terms. Uh, you know, uh, so so I, I see right now, I mean, this personal view is a lack of leadership towards this. If only you had another group of sort of these Meiji uh, reformers with that kind of uh, vitality and, and decisiveness to grasp the moment and decide on a fundamental reorientation of where the country is headed. Yeah. That's just my personal view. I don't know if Alpasan agrees with that, but yeah, I I um I agree, uh, and I uh, do want to remain positive and optimistic because um, yes, Japan may have difficult time. I think it will have difficult um, times ahead, but then Japan is also a very old country. Depending on how far you go back, um, two thousand, three thousand years. And it has a long um, historical relationship with, with other countries in the region. So whatever um, comes, you know, uh, whatever world order um, is coming right now, I think Japan can survive. And I think Japan should be confident it can survive and somehow manage this. It could be very messy. I don't know uh, what kind of ups and downs it's going to have to go through. I hope it won't be too extreme um, or too harsh. Uh, we may have to do it the hard way, but even then, I think it will rise uh, at the I'm, end of the yeah. I am quite. I'm I'm rather optimistic at the moment because even though I think Japan has has there are some dangers for for. You know, ideology to to destroy certain things at the moment. Japan is still extremely pragmatic, and even if it doesn't look like it, Japan is very good at pretending that it follows what the U.S. says, while it doesn't. It did so in the <laughs> 1980s. It did so in the 1990s. So um, Japan, first and foremost, wants to be seen as a good kid as doing things, but then it kind of doesn't go along, at least not like as the Europeans. And that's already a, um, that's already something that speaks for it. And, you know, the, 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 the connection with Southeast Asia, the ODA and the work that Chaika does and so on, and the interconnections and also the links that this creates also with, with development projects. Um, those are all things that will keep going on. And the, that I think um, that have been hugely important for Japan in the past and that they know that it will still be important in, uh, in the future. So they will continue doing that. And that's, that's one form of trade and investment, right? Um, and I think, uh, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the, the South uh, ASEAN Council- Yeah, they absolutely have to, have to get that. going. Yeah, yes, yes, they, they do. And, and Japan has a lot of uh, sort of favor in the region from, from, uh, yeah, fr from that. But the Japanese have to get their game going because- uh, you know, over the next few years, you have a kind of another industrial revolution uh, mm -hmm. going on in, in new energy, uh, yeah. uh, both in the production of new energy, new energy vehicles. So you have a new ecosystem in which the, the Japanese are not, not terribly strong. They're not very good players in this. I mean, you know, in, in electric vehicles, for example, uh, they haven't, uh, you know, the, the leadership just isn't there. They're losing out big time in in in. in in China and 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 could also in in Southeast Asia, right? If they don't stump up, so somehow they have to find a role, uh, a new role in the emerging um, 
uh, ecosystem. Yeah, but that that can only come about with with a with a kind of a degree of of, of pragmatism, right? And re rekindling older conceptions of where they stand in an East Asia, not outside from a kind of NATO, which is really pathetic. It's not going to get them anywhere, but within the region. And I think there's a role for them there. My friends, I said I will keep it under an hour and I didn't succeed, <laughs> well, but we have, which means we have to wrap up now. I would like to thank mm -hmm. you both for taking the time and we will certainly talk again about Southeast Asia and Japan. Uh, John and Naoko, where can people follow you? Oh, my myself just on my on on my on my Twitter uh, handle, uh, yeah, handle? J, J Wine, yeah, yeah, and um, I'll be contributing to this sort of a multipolar peace uh, movement thing okay. over the years. So I publish, I've been publishing in uh, you know Beijing Review and Global Times, generally in these uh, uh, Chinese publications. Yeah, and now Kosan, you also publish uh, uh, social media or something. Um, I I don't I don't do a lot of social media and I should be um, yeah but uh, yes we're working on it right now. You don't you don't you yeah. don't have to. I mean you have academic publications so people can follow that. I'll put everything into the mm -hmm. into the description below. Uh, John mm -hmm. uh, Pang and uh, Naoko uh, Kuma Kumada, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having thank us. Thank you.